From childhood Anna Bloodso raised in a foster family, disliked her curly hair and did everything to straighten it. Her cousin Linda helped her with this, but now things didn't go as planned, and Anna ended up with a burn. Next we see the production of hair extensions. This service is in high demand. The events unfold in Los Angeles in 1989. Grown up, Anna still hates her curly hair. Since childhood, she has had a scar from an unsuccessful attempt to straighten her hair. Anna dreams of building a career in television, but in four years of work, she has never appeared on screen. That's why Anna attends auditions for different channels. But the competition is too intense. In the end Anna failed, just like all the previous times. She dreams of becoming a star but lacks the charisma and chutzpah for it. Today Anna was late for work, but Grant Madison, the head producer who gathered all the channel staff for discussions, didn't even notice. In addition, Edna who wanted to promote Anna, decided to step down from the position of the channel's chief editor. Her place will be taken by Zora Choice, a stylish middle-aged woman. The shooting of programs will be suspended until the channel undergoes reorganization. Zora's assistant, Rosalind, will have a conversation with each of the employees alongside her to find out what they can contribute to the channel. Certainly no one likes such changes. Anna and the others begged Edna to stay, but she intends to start her own production company. Anna's hopes of appearing on screen as a host collapsed. Their channel broadcasted a music video of the popular dark-skinned singer Sandra, who had stunning straight hair. Clearly she must have used extensions because chemical straightening wouldn't achieve such an effect. Anna dreams of having such hair. Perhaps it could change her life. At the end of the workday, Anna asked her handsome colleague Julius if he had any plans for the evening. Julius hinted that he had a date tonight. Even Anna's personal life is not going well. Realizing that her feelings are not mutual, she couldn't hold back her emotions and cried in the restroom. The colleague thought that the reason for Anna's tears might be the possible dismissal. But hardly anyone is going to fire Anna because she costs the channel almost nothing. Anna's life seems meaningless. Before going to bed, she watched a melodrama, dreaming of love and a successful career. When the movie ended, Anna saw Julius on the TV channel, who was a host. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. It was the angry landlord, displeased that Anna had delayed the rent by 10 days. She didn't open the door. The next day at work, everyone was on edge. Zora conducted a personal interview with each employee. Essentially it was a selection process. It was Anna's turn, who used to be Edna's assistant. She said that she wanted to be a director and a host. Anna did everything for it, but in the end the position was given to Julius. Anna talked about her ideas, which intrigued Zora. She asked her to outline everything, including the technical aspects, script options and budget. But Anna had already had everything planned out for a long time. Zora offered Anna the position of a producer's assistant. However, aside from professional skills, Zora pays attention to the appearance of the staff. Therefore to secure the position, Anna must meet certain standards and change her hairstyle. Anna is willing to do anything for the promotion, so she's going to go to the salon and get hair extensions. After work, Anna visited her family. Linda and her boyfriend were also here. Anna boasted about her promotion without mentioning that her superiors haven't made a final decision yet. It's important for Anna that the family be proud of her. During dinner, they discuss legends and superstitions. Anna said it was nonsense, but her uncle Amos despite his academic degree, disagreed. Anna was raised with Western European values from childhood, so her thinking is narrow. Anna's family is convinced that she is dating Julius. Anna is ashamed to admit that it's not true, as in many other things. However, the aunt has already guessed that her niece had financial problems. Anna admitted that her rent had been increased by $500. The aunt gave her the money. After dinner, the uncle gave Anna a book on folklore. Anna reluctantly accepted the gift. Of course she doesn't believe in superstitions. The next day, she went to the salon to get hair extensions using her aunt's money. This service is very popular and expensive, and appointments are booked for months ahead, but Anna managed to arrange one. Anna's childhood dream was about to come true. The extension specialist showed her samples of hair. When she saw the luxurious black strands, Anna felt something inside. Due to the scar, the procedure was painful, but Anna was willing to endure any discomfort just to get the hair of her dreams. During the procedure, Anna was haunted by creepy memories from her childhood. She even lost consciousness, and when she woke up and saw her reflection in the mirror, couldn't believe it at first. Now Anna looked like a TV star. The master gave her an essence for care and explained that she shouldn't wet her hair. The first week would be very unpleasant. Anna was thrilled. She didn't get nervous at all when she met her idol Sandra here at the salon. This singer's music video is broadcasted on their channel. In the evening Anna drank, celebrating her success. However, the painful sensations did not disappear. Suddenly there was another knock on the door, it was the displeased landlord. But Anna had spent her last money on her hair. At night, 
She couldn't sleep because of the pain and decided to read the book given by her uncle. It talked about folklore, including a story about a girl with hair made of moss. This girl wasn't beautiful and worked as a servant, doing the most ungrateful tasks. One day, she went for a walk in the forest and gathered moss, as thin as the hair of her mistress. The girl took this moss and made a wig for herself. At night, Anna had nightmares related to her family. The next day at the office, Anna was in the spotlight. She felt like a queen, even though the hair still caused her discomfort. Julius wanted to ask her out on a date, but Anna just walked past. The colleagues looked at her with admiration and envy. Rosalind approached Anna and complimented her new look. In addition, Zora wants Anna to attend the meeting today alongside directors and producers. At some point, Anna felt like her hair had a will of its own. During the meeting, Julius continued to compliment Anna. While everyone discussed the new direction of the channel, Anna felt discomfort because of her hair and couldn't concentrate. After the meeting, Anna asked Zora if she would let her host the show. However, Zora considers it risky to entrust it to someone without experience. Unable to hold back, Anna said that all these rules somehow don't apply to Julius, as if he has some exclusive privilege. Zora made no secret of the fact that she was romantically involved with Julius. Only after evaluating the abilities of all employees will she choose a new host. After that conversation, angry Anna went to Julius's dressing room and gave him a scandal. However, Julius is completely unbothered by the fact that Zora is much older than him. His career depends on it. Additionally, Julius hinted that he's not the only one with secrets, so it's better to keep quiet. After work at home, Anna was combing her hair and feeling pain. There was a knock on the door, and at that moment something strange began to happen with Anna's hair. It was just a nightly nightmare. In reality someone was knocking on the door too. Fortunately it wasn't the landlord but Linda, who came to check on her sister. Linda appreciated Anna's new image. Of course uncle wouldn't approve because he's against such things. Anna's hair continues to behave strangely, as if alive. Anna hopes it's just hallucinations due to exhaustion. Before leaving, Linda gave Anna a small gift, cassettes of their recordings. Anna sincerely thanked her sister. They have always had warm relations. Alone in the apartment, Anna played one of the cassette tapes. Since childhood, she had dreamed of becoming a TV star and sang, envisioning herself as popular. Suddenly the landlord entered the apartment. He wouldn't go anywhere until he received payment in one form or another. Anna was ready to give him the money, but Mr. Tannen was in the mood for something else. Anna realized that Mr. Tannen wouldn't let her go easily, so she pretended to want to play music because of the thin walls. In reality Anna discreetly took a sharp object. When Mr. Tannen approached from behind, she attacked him. However, Anna was significantly weaker. At some point, something strange began to happen to her. Anna's hair attacked Mr. Tannen and took his life. Anna was horrified, not understanding how this was possible. What was happening seemed like something out of the realm of fantasy. Waking up in the morning, Anna hoped that the events of yesterday were just a nightmare, but her hopes were not realized. Mr. Tannen was found lifeless under the building's windows. It looked like an accident. None of the residents felt sorry for Mr. Tannen because everyone hated him. One of Anna's colleagues, Sista, refused to change her image to please the channel. Zora said that if she didn't do it, she would be out of a job. Looks are crucial in this industry. After the meeting, Anna spoke with Sista privately, convincing her that if she alters her appearance, she won't cease to be herself. They are just doing their jobs and must conform. Sista promised to think about it and left. Alone in the dressing room, Anna saw that the eyes in her reflection were glowing like a demon. In the evening, Anna applied essence to her hair, but it was not enough. The next day, Zora hinted to Anna that her hair had lost its shine. If Anna didn't do anything, she wouldn't get the position of the show's host. Their conversation was interrupted by Julius, who didn't know that Zora wasn't alone. To avoid losing her job, Sista also got hair extensions. Her new look was stunning. At home, Anna is contemplating what to do with her hair. She would be happy to get rid of it, but she can't. Her hair has a mind of its own. Anna tries to convince herself that all those strange things didn't really happen. Suddenly her hair became beautiful and shiny again. At the channel's office, there was a corporate event. Anna looked like a goddess. She was delighted to see Edna, her former boss. They decided to step away from the loud music and have a private conversation. Edna began to express her displeasure that Anna stopped being herself to please Zora and the channel producers. Of course Anna didn't like it. She had worked so hard for many years and wasn't ready to give it all up now when she was so close to her dream. It's evident that the friendship between Edna and Anna has come to an end, but Anna has no regrets, considering herself better than Edna. Now Anna is in the spotlight. However, something dimmed her joy. It turned out that Grant Madison decided to give the position of the host to Zora, who hadn't appeared on screen for many years. Anna's hopes are shattered. 
While smoking outside, she witnessed a quarrel between Zora and Julius. Angry, Zora caught a taxi and left. Distraught Julius approached Anna and began to complain about his life. According to him, Zora manipulates him, threatening to fire. Suddenly Anna asked Julius if his car was here. They went together to his place. Julius didn't see how Anna's eyes turned demonic. She used to dream of being in Julius's apartment. And here she is. But is it right? At some point Anna wanted to leave, but Julius asked her to stay. They gave into passion. During this, obeying the will of her own hair, Anna took Julius's life. At that moment, horrifying visions engulfed her again. In tears Anna fled from Julius's apartment. After calming down a bit, she called Linda, who had recently borrowed the book, and asked her to read the story about the girl with hair made of moss. After the girl put on the wig, she became very beautiful. But it turned out to be not moss but a witch's hair. And the hair needed sacrifices. As it feed, it subjugates the carrier to its will. Anna went to the salon, but this time to a different one to remove the hair. Edna was also here. Anna felt very ashamed for the previous conversation and asked Edna for forgiveness. However, Edna no longer held a grudge. Removing the hair extensions is not that simple. When the master took scissors in hand, the hair attacked her and took her life. The same fate befell Edna and other women who were in the salon. Seeing bodies in front of her, Anna screamed in horror and ran away. She doesn't know where to go or whom to turn to. In the office she saw the lifeless colleague. Next to her was Zora, who was in exactly the same situation as Anna. Her hair is looking for victims too. Neither Anna nor Zora knows how to stop it. When Zora tried to cut her hair, it coiled around her and deprived her of oxygen. Anna fled. Now the uncle is the only one who can help her. He was surprised to say the least, that his niece came in the middle of the night. Anna asked him to tell tales about hair. Amos recounted that many cultures, including Native Americans, believe that hair preserves a person's energy. The next day, Anna was late for work. Everyone was on edge because no one could reach Zora. That's why Anna will have to substitute for her as the host of the show. This is how Anna's dream came true. No one suspects how many lives it cost. Anna had never imagined that she would be on TV together with her idol. Suddenly Anna noticed Zora with demonic eyes. After the broadcast, as she was leaving, Anna saw Zora's silhouette in the office window. This made her go back, but at the workplace, Anna found Rosalind. Suddenly Zora's hair attacked Rosalind from behind. It completely subjugated Zora to its will. Anna hid, but it turned out that many of the channel's employees had extended their hair in that salon and are now seeking victims. Witches possess their consciousness. Anna found herself trapped. Hiding under the table, she armed herself with a sharp object. After a few seconds, someone's hair attacked her. Anna had to escape, but the back door was locked. It turned out that one of Anna's colleagues, Brooke Lynn, survived. She also extended her hair, but in a different salon, so there is no demonic influence. Anna didn't have time to explain anything to her because someone's hair dragged Brooklyn away. To save her colleague, Anna was forced to go back upstairs. Zora's hair and Anna's hair clashed. Anna couldn't shake the feeling that this somehow connected to her ancestors. In the end Anna was able to neutralize the witch. She and Brooklyn rushed to escape together, but when the elevator doors opened, Sista appeared. Her hair attacked Brooklyn and took her life. Anna is the last person the hair hasn't completely taken over yet, but for how long? She's trapped again. Finding a gun, Anna took it and prepared to shoot, but it turned out to be a lighter. Resigned to her fate, Anna lay down on the floor and began to simply await her end. Suddenly an idea came to her. Using the lighter, Anna triggered the fire alarm. Water sprayed from the ceiling. It was salvation because hair detaches due to water. So Anna was freed from this curse, but the others could no longer be helped. Some time passed. Anna read the composition of that essence and learned that it included animal protein. It was as a fodder. Anna's neighbor also extended her hair. Anna is about to move urgently. Now she takes legend seriously. But who's behind it all? Someone benefits from supplying witch hair to salons and subjugating more and more people. Anna learned that today her sister is going to extend hair, and that's where the movie ends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.